It is a dark and dismal Saturday, uh, today being May 23rd, and our, our hope had been to go out on the streets and just chat with people, but I think what we're going to do instead is go into the parks around the city uh, and see some of the progress uh, that we're making and talk about some of our hopes for the future. This is South Park, right here in the south end of Burlington. And it's one of the larger parks in the city. And two years ago, the city put a substantial sum of money into making major renovations in this park. And some of the renovations included four new tennis courts uh, over there, uh, six new basketball courts. We tore down what was there before and rebuilt that. And that's a lot nicer than it was. And we also have two new playgrounds for children. One is over there behind the uh, warming hut, and another one is over there. And the Little League field continues to be used by the kids, and that hasn't, that hasn't changed much. During the last few years, we have made as a major priority in the city uh, rebuilding our park system. And I think that it's, it's fair to say that today the Burlington parks are in better shape than they've ever been before. And one of the reasons that we've done that is that we understand that in a city, it's extremely important to have green space and recreational areas where people can come out and have a good time. They can play ball, uh, watch their kids uh, play, enjoy the playgrounds. It's very important for a city. And I think we're doing a pretty good job uh, in that. So this is South Park, which has undergone a major reconstruction a couple of years ago, uh, is today in very nice shape. You know, and one of the other things that's very interesting is that you find that the better facilities that you have, the more people are going to come out and use them. One might start off by saying, well, you just have a certain number of tennis players in the city, and that's, that's just the number of people who are going to come out. But in fact, what you find is that when you improve the tennis courts, more people gravitate toward tennis and come out. And that's the same with the basketball situation. I think we have more people using the basketball facilities in the city of Burlington now as we have improved those facilities. So, now also, I am standing in front of a, an area which was just rototilled this week, and there is going to be a flower bed over here. We are planting next Saturday, uh, May 30th, uh, in a dozen different locations throughout the city, uh, some beautiful, beautiful flowers all over the city. And this park will be included in that project right over here and a little bit east over there in the park. So, okay, this is South Park. This is the first park that we're visiting today, and we'll see what else we can find. Now, as we move a little bit northward, we're finding ourselves at Perkins Pier Park High. Um, and this is a beautiful place to hang out almost any time. Uh, at sunset, you're going to see one of the most beautiful sunsets in America. It's right over there behind the Adirondacks. Uh, the most exciting developments that are taking place here is that last year we were able to remove some of the very large oil tanks that used to be in this location. There's still some up, but we got rid of, I believe, two of them, and we're able to open up this whole area here uh, for additional park space. And as you can see, we have brought in, looks like one, two, three, four, or five uh, picnic tables and some benches, uh, and that is on a, on a nice sunny day uh, space that is very, very well utilized. We're also adding, uh, have added some more moorings over here for boats, and that is also um, going to be taken advantage of. Uh, this area uh, is almost the central part of Burlington's downtown waterfront. Uh, it's an area that, that we're very proud of, and that in a variety of ways we want to bring people down here uh, as much as we can. Once again, you'll notice over here that there's some rototilled soil, and in this location there's going to be planted next week some very, very beautiful flowers to make this area even more attractive uh, than it is. Uh, further, last year, uh, Nat, if you want to turn around when you get a chance, we have uh, built new parking space which kept the automobiles from coming on down here, and I think that that's a major improvement. So it kept the cars over there and allow people free access uh, to this area over here. Also, we now have some toilet facilities in that building right behind Ben and Jerry's, which I think makes the park that much better. So Perkins Pier 
talk um, is, is, is coming along very well. As a result of the bond issue that was passed just this last March, we're also going to be building, as far as I can understand, some playground facilities down here as well. So for the little kids, there'll be a place to play uh, when their parents are down here. So we're making some uh, real progress on Perkins Pier. Well, while we were talking, I grabbed my fishing rod, raced out over there, threw it in, and look what I came up with. This is an incredible thing. Now, actually, Arnie, uh, say hello to the camera. Your name is? Arnie Griggs. Okay, and you live in Burlington? Yes. Okay, and you just, when did you catch this? About an hour ago. That is... Uh, it's out of Shelburne Bay. Good spot to go. But you're going to weigh it in a moment. Yep. And if the dog doesn't eat it first... The dog doesn't get it. Right. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and you're, you're participating in the Lung Association? Lung Association Derby. Yeah. Okay, that's... Um, and what is the uh, largest fish the uh, get? What do you get for, for bringing in the biggest fish? $100,000 for each category. Well, Arnie, listen, I well, a couple well, of things okay. I would like to chat with you about. $100,000? Yeah, savings bond for each category, lake trout or salmon. Holy cow, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. And the place the boat carpeting, you ruin landing it. <laughs> is, uh, is that, does that have a shot to be a winner, do you think? Mm, what do you think? I, know. I think it does. It has, it has a chance in placing yep. for the money. And in the last place is $1,000. Uh, $1, so I think we've got a good chance here with this fish. Okay, well, let's go. We're going to go weigh the fish now. Let's go. I'll take that, sir. All right. Get a good weight back. Yeah. We'll take the pieces of steel that he put inside it out, right? <laughs> 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 Glad you said it. Thank you. 6.8. Is that the largest one you've caught? The largest lake trout we've caught in. It's still tough, man. That's six point. What's the uh, what's the winning weight so far? The biggest one is a nine, around 9-pound nine lake trout, and the biggest salmon is 7-pound. The biggest salmon so far, counted in the first day, is 7-pound salmon. And the largest lake trout is around 9 pounds plus. How long has the contest been going on? Uh, since yesterday morning, 6 a.m. Okay, and it ends when? It ends at 4 o'clock Sunday. So the largest fish caught so far is about nine pounds. Over nine yes, pounds? that's oh, correct. Wow, yeah. that's so a hell of a how has the fishing in general this year been so far? Um, fairly good, fairly good. The water's been rather cold, and uh, it's been, been very good. Okay. okay, well, good luck. Okay. See you later. Bye-bye. Okay, as we remain here in Perkins Pier, this is Scott Stevens, who's a member of the... Um, Park Patrol, is that what we yes, call it? Is. Okay. And this was a program that was begun several years ago, initiated by the Burlington Police Department, and it's a very excellent program for several reasons. Number one, what it does is it provides us with law enforcement capabilities in virtually all of the parks in the city of Burlington. In the past, what we used to do is contract out with private security departments, and in fact, that did not work out terribly well. Uh, this program is working out better not only because we have people who are officially affiliated with the Burlington Police Department, but we have many people, young people, like Scott, who in fact are looking at law enforcement uh, as a career in later years. Scott, how many years have you been involved in this program? It's been three years now. So you were in year. on the very beginning of the program. Yes. Are you enjoying it? Yes, I am very much. Okay, and where are some of the locations uh, that you've been at um, during the last few I've years? I've worked Oak Ledge Park, Letty Park, and patrolling the bike path with the motorcycle. And I worked here the first year quite a bit, but I was here. Okay, and what are some of the problems that you run into where you feel you need to um, Sometimes motorcycles on the bike path, we catch that quite a bit. Glass bottles is a big thing in the park. Um, basically the big things that we get. Right. Now do, you, do you feel that you are, what I know is that people feel much, much better about coming down to, among other places, Perkins Pier now with a uh, full-time patrol down here. Do you believe that's true? Or? Yes, they do. Um, do I understand that you're looking forward to a career in law enforcement? Yes, I am. Eventually, I'd like within the next year, I'd like to get into some place okay. full time. And you've applied, among other places, to the Burlington Police Department, yes, I right? Am. Okay. Okay. Well, good luck to you. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much.
Which I think in talking to Scott, you see, one of the things that we have been trying to do as a city is that not only are we trying to improve uh, park facilities, but we're also trying to make certain that we have better police protection down there, because unless people feel secure, they're not going to be utilizing the park. Uh, the truth is that the, this park patrol program has been a very successful program. Uh, for relatively small amounts of money, we're, we're able to hire young people who do not carry, they do not carry weapons, but they have walkie-talkies, and they can bring in the regular police department at a moment's notice if it's needed. But their presence here goes a long way uh, toward, deter toward uh, deterring crime, and I think adds uh, a great deal more security to the park system. So it, it's a program that's been working uh, very well. Okay, as we head further north uh, in the city, we find ourselves at uh, Battery Park. And Battery Park, to me, is especially interesting and is especially important because of the major changes that have taken place here in the last uh, five years. The truth of the matter is that five years ago, this park was a place that many families and, and kids did not go to because there really was a rather bad element that hung out here. What we used to have is parking used to take place right over there, and you used to have a lot of cars with a lot of undesirable characters, and in fact there was a lot of drug dealing, and some people may remember uh, eight or ten years ago where there really was uh, a real battle here between the Burlington Police Department and, and some people, a very ugly scene in the modern history of the uh, city of Burlington. Today, the park is in better condition, I think, than it has been for a very, very long time. We have put in uh, new playground equipment, and in fact, this year there'll be some additional pieces of major playground equipment brought in here. Uh, furthermore, there are going to be major renovations to make the park more accessible uh, to the handicapped, and uh, other improvements are going to be taking place. The goal is to make this a park for the whole city and for the old north end that people are going to come down and enjoy. During the summertime on Sunday night, we continue the Burlington Band concerts, which have been going on for decades. And in addition to that, this year again, we'll continue the Thursday night uh, Battery Park concert series, uh, which brings out hundreds, if not thousands, of people on a given Thursday night, depending upon who's performing. So what we're seeing here is a park which has undergone major improvements which are part of the whole revitalization and improvement of the old North End. It's a park now, I think, that people enjoy a uh, lot of positive activity uh, and that will continue to see more improvements. A major improvement, again, uh, scheduled for this park, uh, this construction season, making it more accessible to the handicapped, more playground facilities uh, and equipment for the kids. Um, so this, this is uh, a project that we're very proud of. We've made some real, uh, real progress here. Your name is? Stan Bradeen. Stan, how you doing? Okay. Stan lives on Hungerford Terrace? Yep. Okay, and I see, is that your That's daughter? Daughter, Jaska. Hi, Jaska, how you doing? So what are your thoughts? Well, it's a kind of a gray, clammy day, but it's still nice to come out and be here. Um, I, hearing what you were saying before, I agree you know, largely, but um, I do feel that it was too bad that some of the, uh, which to some people were quote unquote undesirable elements, don't have a, a place as that they can go as well. And some of the behavior was inappropriate, but I'm not sure if we quite needed to close the place down as in the in the manner that we did. Um, maybe that was necessary to make things a little less scruffy. But I'd like to think that we could have a park that had uh, room for both the neat and some of the less neat elements, so to speak. Well, I think it wasn't the question of. of neat and non-neat. Obviously the park is free and it's open to anybody who Still wants is. to come in. Yes, that's true. It is and it always will be. The question is that we had a situation where it wasn't a question of unneat. It really was not how people dress, but it was a question of intimidating other people from utilizing the facility and that was what the it was. The it was uncomfortable. I yeah. have been you, here you for years. You remember. Yeah. I've okay. been in town for oh, since oh, for about the last 17 years. So, yeah. So. yeah, and you know, it's uh, you raise an interesting point and there's not a simple answer. Uh, on the one hand, one wants to make certain that all facilities are open to all people. On the other hand, you also want to make sure that people, elderly people, for example, people with kids, feel comfortable and, and, and utilize the facility that was meant for them as well. And drawing that balance is difficult, but uh, no, it's never easy. It's never easy. Okay, thanks for chatting with you. Thank you.
We're in the process of driving down North Street to head to the Barn School to look at the new playground over there. And who do we bump into right here on Pitkin Street but Alderman Gary DeCarlis with a tree? Gary, what is going on? Why do you have this tree here? Well, as you know, uh, trees are of particular interest to me anyhow. And uh, I had an extra tree that I had bought uh, from the Qantas Cup club a couple weeks ago and uh, Dickie and Bev Allen who own our Allen Beverage Center here had wanted a tree for a number of years since I didn't have a need for it any longer I thought I'd bring it down here and plant it for them today and as you can see Pitkin Street uh, is a very beautiful street in part because of the right. trees that we have right and uh, this is just to further that uh, aesthetic okay. beauty by trees because one of the nice things about traveling around on a Saturday morning is you never know what you're going to run into here's an alderman planting a tree and Gary is absolutely right. I, I think this street, along with many, many others, has undergone a major transformation because of the planting of, of trees. Most of all of these trees were planted within the last two years, with the exception, of course, That's of the right. big ones. That's right. Uh, our tree planting efforts in the last five years by the city have literally transformed this street into something that, from an urban desert to an urban garden, it's, it's beautiful. It's absolutely incredible. You know, it, it, I know you and I share that. It's just, uh, it absolutely is incredible. It's right. beautiful. And these are beautiful. This is a, uh, what, a cranberry? Uh? That's a radiant crab. Radiant uh, crab, right. Yeah. Beautiful. It's an absolutely beautiful tree. And what, the plan is to put it right in here? The plan is to put it here, and this will pretty much finish off this whole side of the street. We've got uh, crabs going all the way down, and nice maples, red and uh, regular maples on the other side. And it's just, it's just beautiful. It's the first thing people notice when they come out absolutely. of Pitkin Street today. To me, <coughs> I mean, the investment on the city's part is a few thousand dollars. And it's just absolutely incredible what, what that does. Yeah. And 20 years from now, what you're going to see is oh, tall trees all over phenomenal. the city. And it's That's just, right. uh, just beautiful. So basically, with the planting of this, you'll have we'll the tree. Pretty much have finished off the whole street. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. terrible. Well, I congratulate you for your efforts. It's, uh, that's really great. Uh, and uh, another nice piece of all this, uh, it's encouraged the owners of properties here to do their own landscaping absolutely. aside from all that. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And that's true. Not yeah. only here, but all over the city. I think people just take more pride in their neighborhood when they see the natural beauty. You know, as we go around, also people are planting often little flowers around the, uh, right. the base of the trees. We had some 300 flowers that have just gone to seed now uh, that came out, which made not the trees even more beautiful. And uh, that's something that people have done on their own. So. You know, what I've always felt is that when the city shows an effort to a community that says, hey, we know your needs and we're willing to put in some money and some effort, people respond that's accordingly. Right. No and, question and about it. Uh, yeah. Okay, great. Okay, Gary, thanks a lot. Yep. My okay. pleasure. It is absolutely amazing what can occur when you go out on a Saturday morning and just go walking around the streets of Burlington. Uh, it really is lovely. We are now in the Bond School, which is an elementary school loaded, located in Burlington's Old North End along North Street. And actually, my original purpose in coming here this morning was to point out some new playground equipment that now exists on the front, and we'll take a look at that as well. And also to point out that here in the back, uh, which used to be a pretty pathetic area, I know there used to be a hill uh, with a sharp decline, and in recent years we have improved that, so that now it in fact is a lovely playing area, and I see some new soccer um, goalposts over here. It turns out in walking back here, what do we end up stumbling upon? But one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven young people, all of whom I gather attend the bond school. Is that right? You guys go to the bond school? No. All right, some alumni. And okay. And also, who is here but the principal of the bond school? And this is, ladies and gentlemen and taxpayers, we point out a Saturday morning. This is a Saturday morning. He doesn't get paid for doing this. Steve, why don't you come on around here, maybe? And we'll talk to uh, Steve Hamilton, who is the principal of the Bond School, and we'll talk to some of the young people as well. Steve, why on a Saturday morning do we find 11 young people painting a circle here in the backyard of the Bond School? Why is the principal here? What's going on? These kids being detained, have they done some awful crimes that they're, uh, well, they're paying we'll for? We'll see <laughs> when the day's over with. But okay, what is in fact going on? This is um, actually the uh, neighborhood planning assembly from Ward 3. Um, the proposal for this year, one part of it for a playground improvement for the whole community was to have the murals designed. So the school kind of worked a little bit in cooperation. We spent some of our funds to bring an artist, in, a local artist, 
to help the children actually design the mural that they wanted, and they decided they'd design a large sun-like shape, circle shape that we could use for games, and then also they're going to, later on, we'll plant, uh, paint a huge picture of Vermont on here, and, and maybe at different times paint some of the products or animals that live in this state and some of the places that children have visited on this different field trips. So it's really, uh, this is more of a community project, I guess, right now, and it's, but it's the community of our school as well. Fantastic. So you have some kids who are in the school and some kids who have recently left the school, is that right? That's right. That's yeah. absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Uh, before we talk to the kids, though, uh, what I have noted, and I know is the fact, is that we have new playground equipment out in front and that this backyard now is in infinitely better shape than it used to be. Is that correct? That is correct. And that's, uh, again, as the result of, I think, the neighborhood decisions in past years and community development funds. Okay. So. so I think what we're seeing here is a very good relationship between the city and the school system. And in the sense that this area is now being used more by the community, I think it's fair to say. I've gone down here some uh, weekday evenings and seen a lot of families out here mm -hmm. using the equipment. I think that's right. And I think another part of this year's plan was a beginning phase of putting um, some of the uh, tennis court, the, the playground off to the east of the school is in a nice shape and we're going to be looking to put a, a temporary or movable tennis facility in there so that parks and recreation can have different after exactly. school and summer exactly. Exactly. In fact, we just appropriated that money. Uh, hopefully it'll be passed in the next couple of weeks. Great. Um, okay, that's good. Why don't we say hello to some of the kids, okay? Okay. Okay, kids, who wants to talk on television? Got a couple people. All right, I'll come to you. It'll be okay. easier, I think. Now, what I do on Tuesday night is I do a television program. It's on Channel 15. Did any of you ever watch Channel 15? Okay, and that's a special type of station that deals mostly with the city of Burlington. And this is Nat Air, and Nat helps film a lot of the things that are going on. Now, one of the things we want to do is talk to you about why you're here and why you're doing this. And who wants to explain that to me? Who wants to tell me? Okay, this young man right here. What is oh, Okay, what is your name? Dwayne. And okay. you go to the barn school? Yeah. Okay, well, what are you doing over here? We're going to make a big picture out of painting. Okay. A picture of Vermont. A picture of Vermont. And did you help decide that this would be the project? Yeah. Good. And would you talk about it in your class? Okay. And what's going to happen after this is painted yellow? What else is going to happen? We're going to make a big map right in front of, in the center of it. And who's going to help make that map? All 11 of us. All of you guys are going to help draw that map, paint that map? And what color is it going to be, do you know? I think green and yellow. Fantastic. Another paint over it. That is absolutely fantastic. Okay, who else wants to tell me a little bit about this project? Okay, come on. Okay, what is your name? Tommy Duvall. Do you usually have yellow right here on your cheek, Tommy? <laughs> no. Okay. This is Tommy Duvall. Tommy. Okay, so what's going on here? Why are you out painting? So I'll make my school look better. Okay, so how things been going at the barn school? Huh? How have things been going here at the barn school? Good. Good, Not you like bad. it? Mm-hmm. So do you guys, you know, you're going to be painting, when this is finished yellow, I understand that you're going to paint a Vermont. map of Vermont. Yeah. And then you're going to place in here some, what, animals that exist in Vermont and stuff? Yeah. Cities. Okay. A couple cities. Good. So and, and have you helped design this? Okay, absolutely. Did you have a good time? Did you have a good time doing it? Yeah. Okay. It's fun. Well, I think it's really going to make this, uh, this yellow is a beautiful, bright yellow. And I think it's going to make this playground look a lot nicer than it used to be. Right. Now, <laughs> do you guys play over there often? Yeah. Do you remember no. the way it used to be? No, no, no. With that big hill down yeah. there? Who can remember that? Is it a little bit nicer now than it used to be? Yeah. yeah okay. No. Who wants the elf to talk to me on the... Okay, let's go. Okay, you both of you guys come here. All right. Now, somebody, now look, first of all, I want the TV camera to take a look at these yellow sneakers. These are fantastic yellow sneakers. So where did you buy a pair of yellow sneakers like that? That is really something else. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what is your name? Crystal. Crystal what? Owen. What are you doing here, Crystal? Painting. Okay, did you take part in planning this effort? Yeah, we had a group. <laughs> and what, you discussed it in class? Uh-huh. Okay. And um, so you're also going to be working on the map of Vermont, right? Uh-huh. Were there any other ideas that were discussed, or was what people like yes. the idea of what there's other ideas? There's going to be two squares, and there's going to be a maze and a dinosaur. A maze and a dinosaur? Yep. 
Wait, going right into this circle? No. Where's the, oh, over where? there. Where on the pavement or uh, over? On the, the pavement. So you're going to be draw, you're going to be painting a maze and a dinosaur. Yes. Right. And what is the maze going to be doing? People can, is that going to be a place for a game for kids to play or? Yeah. Okay. What about the dinosaur? That's just going to be a That's picture. That's going to be like a maze. It's going to be like a maze. Uh huh. And you're going to be able to play games around that? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's fantastic. Okay, thank you very much. What is your name? Jason. Jason what? Wheel. I'm oh, sorry? Wheel. Jason Wheel. Okay, Jason. And were you involved on the the planning process here as well? No, no. Okay, are you just coming out and helping? Yeah. Now, it seems to me you guys are making a really nice playground here, huh? Yep. So do you come down here on Saturdays and Sundays as well as during the week to play? Y yeah. Okay, a lot of kids come here and play? No. Not too many? Okay, do you ever use the uh, the playground back here to play soccer and stuff? Yep. Ball? Good. Okay, so how are things going at the Mon School? Good. Okay. You're gonna be looking, are you looking forward to summer vacation? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thanks very much, Jason. Okay, thank you. Okay, see you all. Bye-bye. One of the fun things about doing this program, especially about going out on a Saturday morning, is that you never know what you're going to find. And what we have just found in the last few minutes is an alderman who is planting a tree across the street. We have found a principal of a local elementary school who is working on a Saturday morning with 11 kids putting in a mural in the backyard. Um, and I think these are the little things which tell us how the city of Burlington is moving. Uh, and in especially this area, which for many, many years had been the most neglected area in Burlington, it is just a delight to see the kind of changes that are taking place uh, and the kind of activities that are occurring. Where we're sitting right now is the front of Bond School. Uh, and what you're looking at here is some new playground equipment uh, that had just been added here, I think, over the last year. And what you'll see if you come down here on a warm evening is you'll see parents and kids out playing here. You'll see it utilized more than just as a school facility, but it is a community facility. Um, and I think these are elements of change that are taking place in the old North End, which indicates a significant improvement in the quality of life. Uh, something that I'm, I'm proud of. Okay, now, now what we have is North Street is behind us. And one of the concerns that many people have spoken about regarding the North Street, North Street specifically, is there aren't trees on North Street. And during the last couple of years, we have made some good progress. Uh, you can see over there in front of the Bruce store, we have four potted trees. And they come out and they'll be out all summer long. And last uh, fall, I think it was, we planted one, two permanent trees over here. And in fact, if I'm not mistaken, we're going to be planting even more trees on North Street. There are also some new trees further west. So uh, one of the goals in beautifying the area is to plant trees uh, in the North Street area. And we're making some good uh, progress there as well. Homeowners, is your boiler on the blink? Does your roof leak? The Burlington Home Improvement Program provides low and no interest loans for these and other repairs. If you're a low to moderate income homeowner in the Old North End, King Street, Lakeside, or Chase Street neighborhoods, you can get additional information about the Home Improvement Program by contacting the Community and Economic Development Office at City Hall, 658-9300, extension 197.